Welcome to my channel. Today, a tutorial where we're going to use the paper piecing technique using gel prints, or you could use scrapbook papers. So I'm working in my 7x10 Cans and Mixed Media art journal page. And this is, well, it was a gel print, but I actually scanned it and I printed it off onto copy paper. Now I have this floral design. It is applique work from a quilt makers thing. I saw it on Pinterest. I've had it forever. And today is the day that I am going to use it. I made myself a template of it. And then I am going to cut out the floral out of this gel print or copy of a gel print. You could use scrapbook papers. You can use, um, you can paint something specific for this if you want it to. So I'm going to get, I have this ombre, ombre painted, use yellow, orange, pink, and I want to get all those colors. I think that'll look really bright as a flower. Now my plan was to do two of them, which is why I traced two of them. And then I simply cut out the pattern. Now the dots that you see, that was made by a mark making tool, they are navy. And that's important because when I decide on my background. Now, as soon as I flip the orientation there, I think to myself, you know what, what if I upped it to the nine by 12 page, but then I need a third flower to balance it out. So I cut the third flower out of yellow. Now I'm cutting out this centerpiece I'm getting the size and I'm going to cut out coordinating, um, contrasting flowers. So the pink flowers are gonna have a yellow center there and the yellow, cent yellow flower will have a pink center. And fortunately on my eight and a half by 11 piece of uh, gel print or a copy of a gel print, I had just enough with a little bit to spare. I'm loving these vibrant colors. So I play around with the orientation, then I'm thinking, okay, now I need to figure out what kind of background. Now, because there's a lot of, there's blue on there, I thought blue, so I pulled out some of my gel prints and I'm just auditioning what color works best. Basically, I was using that as a way of making a decision of how I wanted to paint the background. I really had no plans of using a gel print on the bottom, especially since I moved up to the nine by 12, but I found this gel print and it just seemed to be perfect. So because it wasn't big enough to cover the nine by 12, I go back to my original plan and use the seven by 10 mixed media page. Here I'm putting a coat of gel medium on and I'm just going to glue that gel print right down onto the page as an Insta background. I'm not even adding anything to this background. I don't want to add too much because I don't want it to compete with the patterning and the bright colors of the flowers. But I did want something a little bit interesting. So this has some green, it has some pattern, some grunge, getting rid of that little bit of white there just by adding some blue. So then I decide, okay, we have the two. I'm gonna put a pink flower and a yellow flower. I'm just figuring out now exactly how the orientation, where do I want them to go? These flowers do seem a little oversized for the page. I could have taken that and shrunk it down, but I was just going to make it work. So there's a lot of auditioning in here, playing around, seeing which way do I like it. Again, I flip the orientation. Don't be afraid to do that. Now I was going to paint the stems green and I even start one and then I think, oh, you know, I bet I have a gel print. And yep, of course I do. The benefit of using the gel print is you have all that variation in it 
already. It isn't a flat color. There is some interest there. I keep all my gel prints organized basically by color. So it's easy enough to flip through the greens, the blues, the pinks, and find that perfect piece of gel print. And as you can see, this gel print is just blues and greens mixed on it. There's no patterning at all. And so when I make my gel prints, when I do a sash builder, I leave some relatively plain. So now I went to my sentiment pack and I'm looking through the through the garden gate sentiment pack which is great for the garden lovers flower people and you know it's spring and I'm ready for things to start blooming in fact the heathers have already started to bloom so love that so I play around again I'm checking out the possibilities additioning them Now, so far, I haven't had to really get out any paint. It's all jelly prints. It's all stuff that I've had in my stash. I love that. Live life in full bloom. These blossoms are huge and so colorful. So then I'm just gluing it down. I glue whatever is underneath. It has to be glued down first. And again, I'm using my gel medium. It's what I have out. But fluid medium would have worked here as well. I love the shape of this funky flower. Now, just FYI, because I did cut out another flower, you're going to get a bonus project at the end. I'm going to use basically a lot of the same things, but doing a little things differently and working on a different size. loving the bright colors but I want to add some details and I'm going to do that by using my shading technique and I will link that video where I teach how to do it this is a great technique that you will use and you use acrylic paint and an angle brush and I'm using black acrylic paint here I just want to make that focal image stand out and I'm going to add the details to the flowers Hopefully already you can see how the addition of this really makes the focal image pop. Now I'm shading around the flowers, figuring out what works best. I want the lines in between the petals. And I discover if you go down like this, you can get that shape of the petal. You can look at the master copy to see where the lines go. When I work on the second flower, you're going to see how quick and easy it goes because I figured it out. Now, if you get a little bit too thick, you can use a baby wipe or a wet cloth and wipe it off. Everything underneath here is permanent. Right now I'm in the process, we're getting our house painted and I'm in the process of packing up the studio. Everything has to be cleared out of it. So many of my supplies are elsewhere. That's why I, and I found these gel prints and that was why I'm using them.
look at the difference between the flowers. Now, if you like the flower without the lines, you can leave it at that. You just do the outside. There are lots of variations you can do, and each one's going to give you a slightly different look. Then I just bad, add more shading and build it up until it's exactly where I want it to be. But you can definitely see the difference between the, from the one flower to the another. I think I found it easier going from the top down. But you don't have to worry if it's not exact because they're flowers. Everyone's a little different. If anything, by adding the shading, the colors of these flowers have just brightened. They really, really pop. And then I'm going to edge the page with the same shading technique. This frames the picture, ties everything together. It's kind of like outlining everything, but it's more diffused or softer. Now I'm just gluing my sentiment down. I cut off the excess white, but there's still a lot of white, which fueled the next decision here. I grab my white Posca pen and I'm adding some stitch work. Now this quilt pattern was for applique work where you would see the stitches and I just wanted to duplicate that. But I love this look. I think this would make a beautiful canvas, so bright and vibrant. Maybe even make several different kind of wonky flowers, different shapes. Another project for another day. FYI, the 9 by 12 page would have worked with the three flowers. I would just have had to paint it the background instead of using a pre-existing gel print. Thank you if you're a subscriber to my channel. If you're not, please hit that subscribe button. And then click on the bell and select the option to be notified of upcoming videos. You'll get notification whenever I release a video. You can decide if it's something that interests you and check it out or not. Oh, I am loving this page. The bright colors, the faux stitching, 
just everything about it just all came together. And there we go. We have an interesting background, but the focal point really takes the show. Now, we have an extra flower, and instead of just sticking it back in my stash, I am going to use it to make a six by six card. Now, I've pre gessoed this card, and I'm going to put it in this envelope that I made. The idea behind this is to keep the inside of the card neat. I am not a neat crafter, so I need to do whatever I can to keep things as neat and tidy as I can. So I'm going to go with the same color background, but I'm gonna create it from scratch. So I'm using aquamarine blue and yellow green. I grab out the hooker's green, but I don't use it. Getting the paint out, and I'm going to apply it with a makeup sponge. Having the gesso on there is gonna help the colors blend. And I'm thinking I want to do removing the paint through a stencil technique, and that works best when the surface has been gessoed. So I'm just mixing the aquamarine blue and the yellow green right on the card. I want to see some yellow. I want, you know, I want that green. Basically, I'm trying to duplicate what I know worked from that gel print, getting that dark blue. So I grab this stencil. I think it's called Tribal, Tribal something. And I'm removing the paint through the stencil with a baby cloth. You could use a wet cloth. And, you know, that technique worked. I'm not loving this right now. It's a little too much pattern. The focal image, I'm not sure, is really gonna stand out. I'm drawing it, I'm thinking about it. Not every decision we make is a winner. So I decide, you know what, I'm just gonna knock back some of that maybe, and I come in and I'm just adding a layer of blue on top. So you can still see the vague patterning that's there, but it's not, so in your face and yes the focal image stands out and I could have left it like that but I decide oh let's use this calm stencil it's called calm and I'm going to stencil with some white paint on it and I'm loving that so if you're going to do this, you don't need to do the two steps before it. Just put the blue green on there, mix it up, and then stencil with this stencil. Every layer you add, whether you absolutely see it at the end or not, adds a little bit of something to the page. You can't really see those triangles, but that variation does show through. This, I think, is going to allow my focal image to stand out a little bit more than it would have had I just gone with the first pattern of those triangles. So the rest of the video, I am following a lot of the same steps that I did on the art journal page. I did make the leaves a little smaller because we're working on a smaller surface here and the big leaves just didn't seem to fit, but the flower is the exact same size. A 
gluing it down with my fluid matte medium and I chose another sentiment from my Through the Garden Gate. This is, and I think to myself, what a wonderful world. I like making cards that are not necessarily seasonal. And then I send them to people for no reason at all. I like the idea of usable art. Here I'm shading them again. So you could do a multitude of cards, different color gel prints, different sizes of flowers, all using this paper piecing technique. Shading around the outside, edging it. Added a little center line on the, on the leaves. Again, there's variations you could throw in. You could do them all differently. Once dry, I bask off where the letters are, the sentiment is, and I'm splattering with gold. I'm outlining the sentiment with the Posca pen. I also outline the outside of the card. Now the other one I did the white stitch work. On this one I decided I'm leaving it without. Do you like it with the stitches or without? Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you give paper piecing technique a try and use up some of those gel prints or scrapbook papers. Until next time, go get creative.